<laughs> okay. So it's December 17th and we're doing a little spot checking. We have a very small window to look at some colonies. It's pretty warm today. It's about 60 degrees. We've just gone through two weeks of cool weather with a fair amount of rain and tomorrow the temperature's dropping again. And I just want to see what they're up to. This, this yard of bees is our furthest south and lowest elevation yard. So if anybody's going to be rearing brood, it's going to be these guys. We have some Italian type of bees in here. They're pole line queens to be exact, which are famous for brooding up early and a little bit mite resistance. We're, we're just playing around with them. And I want to see first if there's any brood in them because we need to do some oxalic acid vaporization when they're broodless if possible. And I want to see uh, if they're going through their food. With, we had a very warm November and they were brooding all through November, which is not normal. And these single story colonies only have a certain amount of food in them. Um, they weren't extremely heavy when we went into winter, but they were moderately heavy. And I don't want any surprises a month from now. I don't want single story colonies starving or you know any funny business. We're, so we're also gonna do some mite washes today. If they are broodless, it's a really good time to do a mite wash to see exactly where we stand. So we're going to be popping these guys open, checking for brood, checking for weight, and spot checking some mites. We won't wash every colony. We might do three or four just to get an idea if we got, you know, any mites at all. And then you can see we left the rims on these colonies. Those rims are there for a reason. If I'm going to feed these in midwinter, it's not going to be with syrup. It's going to be with sugar cakes of some sort, either fondant patties or our own homemade sugar cakes. I do not like the idea, although I have and could, I don't like the idea of feeding syrup in cold weather. It's not great for the bees and they don't take it well. So we're going to dive in here and see what we got going on. Okay, John, let's open up some of these colonies, see what we got. Okay, boy, you can sure tell they're Italian. Look at those colors. Oh, yeah, they're, they're so yellow. Now, these are pole line queens, just so you know. They came out of Merrimack apiaries, if you've heard of them. I have not. Yeah, they're in Massachusetts and, and Florida, or not Florida, Louisiana. So these queens actually came out of Louisiana. Are they spicy? Uh, not too much. Every once in a while we run, we run across one we don't care for. But you know, Louisiana is known for spiciness. Yeah, these aren't bad. I don't see any brood in there. Okay, check two or three frames to make sure. Okay, all right, there's the queen. Oh, yeah, it's here. There's not much light out here. It's hard to see on a cloudy day like this. There's the queen. There's the queen, okay. I got a couple more frames of bees in there. They're not as small as I thought. Okay. They'll make it. There's a bee that's chewing out right here, but that's not. Mm -hmm. All the queens are marked. I like to see that. Doesn't she know to not? <laughs> yeah, she needs to go down. We are going to make an extra effort to get one of those drone frames in every colony this year. Not every colony has one. Yeah, we still have some heavy food frames in there. Yeah, that's a heavy Maybe colony, isn't colony. it? It feels nice to get in the bees, huh? It does. seen any brood in any of them so looks like we're good for oxalic. We'll start this tomorrow. So this colony in mid-August had four mites in an alcohol wash halfway through the apigard treatment and then in September it had 
zero in an alcohol wash, so we would have been satisfied with that. And now, with 100% broodless, none of these colonies have any brood in them at all. We've got a seven. So, of course, you know, mites like to hide in brood, so that kind of tells the story right there. This colony was showing a zero back in September, and now in December, it's showing a seven. Interesting numbers. So it's the uh, temperature's dropping tomorrow, and we will be back to oxalic acid vaporization <laughs> treatment on these colonies. So that'll clean them up. And now that we know they're broodless, we're going to do it twice. We'll do it tomorrow, which will theoretically, let's just say, get 90% of the mites. That's what some of the research says. And then we'll come back a week later and do it again, and theoretically get 90% of the 10% we left behind. So. Um, in a few weeks from now, we should be in pretty good shape, uh, mite number-wise. The colonies are not large. In this particular yard, they're not large. They're running uh, three to six frames of bees, which is expected. These were not large colonies when we set them up like this last, last fall. Now, they never were big colonies last summer. They got split late and got requeened with these poline queens. and. So, as far as size, they're what I would expect. I, I'm surprised, honestly, to see zero brood in them. I really thought they'd have some brood. But again, they've been, it's been cold for a little over two weeks, so no pollen was coming in. We get some warm weather and the pollen starts to come in a little bit, I would expect them to fire right back up. And we might even give these guys a little uh, fondant patty sooner than later to get them, after the oxalic acid is done, to maybe to get them brooding up again right away. Um, they are a little smaller than I'd like to see them. I want to use these colonies for splitting in the spring, too. I'm hoping to make a lot of nukes out of these bees. And when they, when those single stories get st start to get a little full, I'm going to put a second deep box of drawn comb on them and prepare them for splitting in late March into April. And even though they're a little on the small side right now, I think they'll be ready on time. Anyway, on to the next yard. We have Kevin Monfelt with us from Nebraska. Friend of ours from Nebraska is just visiting for a couple of days, just here for the fun of it. All right, we're at the next yard. We're going to do the exact same routine. Ready, John? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, good deal. John, I did something in the last video I felt bad about. What? Well, I picked on you and said I never pick on Selena. Oh, okay. I've got to amend that. I need to start picking on Selena. I need to, because. Yes. She deserves it, I know. <laughs> She's earned it. Same routine, same bees, just a different yard. I would not get away with a cluster like that in Nebraska, would I, Kevin? No. Um, we just had an 8 degree day with like minus 13 temperatures. So. Yeah, that would be make them That'd toast. So let's go ahead and get the wash kit out and let's see what they're doing right now. So we've shown this before, our little kit. And we're still using alcohol. I know a lot of guys are using soapy water, but uh, we may get around to that. But right now we're still doing alcohol. Actually, next year I am going to change the way I do things. We're going to wash a bunch of colonies next year. I'm going to try to do it a little bit like Greg Rogers does and, and also Randy Oliver, you know, where they take um, samples from every colony in a yard and then take the samples home and wash them later. Um, I want to start looking for mite resistant bees and uh, the way to do that and for our purposes is to really check on mite counts in colonies. I know you can do the liquid nitrogen test for hygienic behavior and all that kind of stuff. We might even do a little of that, but uh, for starters, I'm just going to go by mite counts. Well, there she is, so that helps you. So once again, these are pole line, P-O-L. And I found out I uh, had a nice conversation with Frank Rinkovich from the Baton Rouge lab down there. He's one of the guys working on this pole line. Uh, and he says P-O-L stands for pollination. This bee was produced for uh, um, pollinators, for commercial beekeepers that pollinate and migrate. And they do a lot of mite testing on them. And They're not 
Polish? No, they're not Polish. They're right. they're <laughs> pollinators. One, one might. Yeah, we might wash that one too and just compare. So we need to do that for about a minute. I've also learned there's there's all these debates about what works best for washing mites. Some people say that there's a difference between the 70% alcohol and the 91. And I didn't think that mattered, but uh, some people say it does, that the 90 is better. Sure the 91 would be 90, yeah, better, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. No brood so far, Selena? No brood in this one. Okay. Yeah, we are not going to check the whole outfit. We're just spot checking. No ground. Good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. Seven? There's definitely six. There's six. Oh, I six. Have a question okay. for you guys. What's the question? Now that you're seeing having more Italian in your operation, are you seeing an increase in the propolis? Oh no, no, no. no. Left? This propolis that you're looking at right there is left over from last year. Okay. Well, it's still, I'm saying it last year. It's still 2024, but that was uh, all that yeah, got put on there going, during yeah, our apigard treatments and stuff like that. When they went around that, <clears throat> yeah, they were still Caucasian colonies back then. Uh, we had five. You had five in this one? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and then what we did was we actually put it back, the, the same bat, just put it back in there, shook it just to see if it would change, and it went down to four. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Shows that this isn't super right, accurate. Right, so we, yeah. we had five. We've had up to and five. And that's out of this colony that had, uh, had, one, had one back in September. We're in a yard of double deeps. I know, I do. <laughs> now, that's... A good looking colony, good enough. Okay. Is that box heavy? It is. Yeah, our double deeps are way different than the singles because all of our top boxes are heavy and of course we got several frames in the bottom with food. It's my experience with double deeps. I know if I put this on a video I'm gonna get people arguing with me and you know it's, it just comes down to personal experiences in your area. But I generally, not every colony, but I generally have more bee bodies, more bee count in double deeps going through the winter than I do in singles. That's a nice heavy yeah. top too. That's a heavy top. Mm -hmm. Prop it up. Let's see if there's bees in the bottom. Yeah, this top is extremely heavy. Yeah, not a lot. Well, yeah, there's about three frames of bees in there. So we're looking at a seven, eight frame. well, seven frames of bees here. How's yours, John? It's about five, maybe five frames. Five in the bottom. You got any bees in the top? No. Uh, no. Yep. Oh, a few. oh, yeah, more than you thought. Yep. So, yeah, we get uh, the colonies that are double deeps generally, not every colony, but they generally overwinter with more bees. We've got plenty. This ain't yeah, and that's our personal experience. I know other people would have a different experience. Same scenario, no brood, thank goodness. Right, yeah. It's okay. awesome. Heavy? Very. Very, I like to hear that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all right, heavy? Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. I'd say right now today that uh, somewhere between a third and a half of our outfit is double deeps. I actually do prefer double deeps, even though you see so many singles in our videos. And I got to explain that someday better, why we end up with singles. It has to do with making spring splits and uh, then making sourwood in summer. We're counting on our double deeps to make most of our nukes this spring. We always get more nukes out of a double deep than we do a single. And, uh, well, you know, a colony like that doesn't look that huge at the moment, but uh, in late March through mid-April, we'll get, we can probably pull one and a half to two nukes out of that colony and still have it up 
in time to make honey by the 1st of May, which is when the spring honey flow starts in this location. So the way we make our nukes is two frames of brood and uh, maybe two frames of food and an empty comb. Yeah, looks good. Beautiful location. Got the river right over there, which may not show up in the camera. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Oops. Yeah. I had this yard since 1995, and I've never had the water get in the colonies. I've had it come real close. And that hurricane we had several months ago, the water came right up to the pallets, but it did not get in the bees. And I don't think it'll ever get any worse than that. That was a torrential rain, so if they were okay then, I think we're pretty safe. Yeah. We'll, we'll put John's name on that, Colin. He can split that one in the spring. Well, I'm probably the one who worked it originally. Oh, yeah, okay, that's probably why it's so good. I, uh, okay. <laughs> you need waders when you're working here, and it's not because we're close to the river. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that in December. Great. Yeah, so we'll get a lot of bees out of these in the spring. Might even shake a few packages this year, John. I love shaking packages. I know, we haven't done that in a couple of years. It's been a while. There's one thing I have never done. It's cool.